The inguinal triangle, or the Hesselbach triangle, is like a compartment tucked away deep inside the lower abdominal wall. Now, let's explore its borders. There are three major borders, medially or the inner wall. We have the last five centimeters of the rectus abdominis muscle, the six-pack muscle, acts as its inner boundary, laterally or the outer wall. The inferior epigastric artery, a blood vessel, marks the outer edge. Inferiorly, we have the inguinal ligament. So, why is this space relevant? This triangle can be a target for hernias. These bulges happen when abdominal contents, like loops of the intestine, push through a weak spot in the inguinal canal. They typically show up as a pear-shaped lump above and to the inner side of your pubic bone, right above the inguinal ligament. There are two main types of hernias in this region. One, indirect inguinal hernias. This occurs if the hernial sac enters the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring, lateral to the inferior epigastric artery, and can protrude into the scrotum. They're more common in males, in infancy, or old age. So, here's what makes them possible. A leftover pathway from development called the processus vaginalis. Ideally, this pathway closes up completely after birth, but sometimes it stays partially open, creating a weak spot for hernias to exploit. The second type of hernia is the direct inguinal hernia. These hernias simply barge right through the front wall of the inguinal triangle, pushing the muscles aside. They're more common in older folks because abdominal muscles tend to weaken with age. It is important to note that these hernias can be either complete or incomplete. If the hernia contents make it all the way through and reach the scrotum, in males, or labia majora, in females, it's called a complete inguinal hernia. But if they just reach the inguinal canal and don't go any further, it's called an incomplete inguinal hernia, also known as a bubonocele. Let's talk about the inguinal canal. It's like a hidden tunnel, about four centimeters long, that runs above the middle part of your inguinal ligament. The path it takes. This tunnel starts at the deep inguinal ring. It is an oval opening in the fascia transversalis, a tough sheet of tissue. It is about 1.2 centimeters above your mid-groin point. The tunnel ends at the superficial inguinal ring, a triangular gap in the external oblique aponeurosis, another layer of tissue. The center of this ring is about one centimeter above and to the side of the pubic tubercle. So let's look closer at these two rings. The deep inguinal ring. Entrance. This oval opening in the fascia transversalis allows for entry into the canal. In males, important structures like the vas deferens, the tube carrying sperm, testicular arteries and veins, and even a nerve called the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve pass through this canal. In females, the round ligament of the uterus passes through the canal. The superficial inguinal ring. Exit. It allows for the exit of the following structures in males, the spermatic cord, which carries blood vessels, nerves, and the vas deferens. And in females, the round ligament and the ilioinguinal nerve exit through 